The thoughts, views, and comments expressed by Rodney Munker, his guests, and callers on Freedom March are not necessarily those of the management, ownership, or production unit of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is a production of ILTV and cannot be reproduced or represented in part or entirety without express written consent of the Verizon Media Group. Freedom March is the intellectual property of the Verizon Media Group. Copyright 2020. All rights are reserved. Freedom March is powered by BTC. A double tragedy here on the island of New Providence. The police has arrested, can you imagine, a policeman? And then subsequently they arrested his mother. And that police officer has been accused of participating in a drive-by shooting. It is an interesting story. This morning, shortly after 9 a.m., a Negro lad, he was executed on First Street in the Coconut Grove, cons well, in the Coconut Grove subdivision. And of course, that happens to be in the St. Barnabas constituency. Apparently, a Japanese vehicle drove through the corner with a number of Negro men. When it was all over, they shot the 15-year-old and his brother, whom people have alleged is older. He was able to escape. So it is perhaps the 26th murder for the year. And of course, this Negro lad happens to be the youngest of the two Negro youths who were killed for the year. Broadcasting live from the ILTV studios located here at University Drive, welcome to Freedom March. My name is Rodney Moncur. I'm a justice of the peace here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I'm also a member of the local Catholic Christian community. To my right is my spiritual advisor, Bradley Roll. And of course, Bradley Roll has on the full armor of the Lord. Welcome, my spiritual advisor. Thank you so much. And of course, I see that you are doing very well. Uh, I hope to. I mean, I hope so. This um, is powerful. It is what it is. Well, today is Monday, the 19th day of February. I'm advised that the Prime Minister, if I have it correctly, is in Atlanta opening up one of our council office. I just hope I have it right because things are happening so swiftly here in the Bahamas. And to the Negro lady who lives in Grand Bahama, I shall pass it on to the health minister that the mammary, um, the mammary machine is not working, okay? So I'm very sympathetic to your plight. Hi. From you told me, this is Freedom March. God save the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Welcome back to Freedom Match. My name is Rodney Monker. Bradley Roll is my spiritual advisor, and we shall go straight to scriptures. My spiritual advisor, welcome back. Thank you so much. Good to be here. Matthew 7, um, 15 through 23. Jesus Christ um, sends a very stern one to disciples about um, understand if a true, if a tree is in fact known by its fruit. As it relates to true and false prophets, he says this. He says, watch out the false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, 
will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those, only the ones who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Matthew chapter 7, 15 to 23, NIV. The word of God is always blessed. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Medusa. Back to you, Sandra. Thank you, my spiritual advisor. Well, folks, um, this morning was sad. Uh, you would recall that over the last couple of good days, there was a lull involving gun violence and murder. And of course, this morning, perhaps shortly after 9 a.m., media were alerted that a 15-year-old Negro lad reportedly standing on First Street, the Grove, with his brother. Well, while he stood there, a Japanese car, that is the car that specializes in drive-by shootings. So the car drove by and killed the 15-year-old and his older brother. He was fortunate that, to the best of my knowledge, no harm has been done to him, and he has escaped. This 15-year-old in 2020, in the height of the pandemic, he would have been 11 years old. He would be among the many children, thousands of them, who fell through the crack during a period when the educational system under the Free National Movement malfunctioned due to COVID and due to the many introductions of iPads and things like this. Well, it's a very sad situation that this young man who was killed in the St. Barnabas constituency, um, it was a very tragic incident. Um, many residents who live nearby were afraid and some of them quietly videotaped from their front room. Well, the police held a press conference and perhaps at some point I might be able to show you exactly what was said and to the best of my knowledge, um, no suspect has been taken into custody. But drive-by shooting is taking place. This Negro lad is the youngest for the year, because you would recall that a couple of weeks ago in Nassau Village, a 16-year-old girl perhaps charging her iPhone, some Negro thug showed up, opened fire, and she was killed. So the young man, uh, he's 15 years, according to media report, and the female, she was 16. So we are faced with these situations where we don't know what our teenagers are doing, because you would recall that on Friday we showed you a video of a number of teenagers um, subjecting a, an adult who is reported to be homeless to a lot of violence and disrespect. So many of our young people, many of our teenagers, many of our school students, they are involved in all sorts of criminal activities. Some say they are parts of gangs, some say they're just breaking the law. So there's a, there's a fundamental breakdown as it relates to parents governing their children. And of course, he was killed at a point when he was not even in school uniform from a photograph that I have seen, he appeared to have been bareback and wearing a short pants and not dressed for school. So that is a very sad situation. And according to those who are specialized in keeping the counts of murdered victim, he's the 16th murdered victim. And of course, the 16 Negro citizen to have been killed 
since the 1st of January. My spiritual advice is Bradley Roll. Uh, do you have any comments, my spiritual well, so advice? Well, um, at the age of 15, though, I mean, when you um, look at the story, these are just the preliminary um, markings of the story, right? Yes. They don't really know what's, what's going on. Now, he's 15, though, Santa. Was he the intended target, or was this just... Um, um, well, no one of, um, can answer that objectively. Okay, okay. If a Negro thug shows up through your corner uh -huh. and he points the gun in your direction, you are a target. If you were not, you would not be shot. Okay. Okay? Don't ever forget so, that. So this if you're standing up! And a Negro thug points a gun at you, you are a target. Now, if you don't believe me, just keep standing there. At age 15. What do you mean at age 15? How could he possibly at age 15, at young age 15. people are parts of alleged gangs. At age 15, young people are smoking dope. These are facts. At age 15, young people are involved in all kind of activities. So the most that you can say is a gun was pointed in his direction. Somebody fired it. He got shot. He's a target. Yeah. Do you wish to suggest well, that there was some other intended well, well, person? I, see, well, the thing is with me, I'm comparing, because when you look at this generation, um, in comparison to the generations in the past. I'm looking at me. Listen, I'm no better than anybody else. And I don't consider myself better than others, for we are all human. But I think our behavior sometimes and the things we get involved with kind of like puts us in certain categories because of our lifestyle and behavior. So I'm thinking about me at age 15. At age 15, you know what I was doing at age 15? What were you doing, my spiritual advisor? Um, I was in school. Okay. Um, at age 15, I was cleaning all of my dad's vehicles. Okay. That was a chore that I was given. Okay. I was cleaning the yards at 15. Okay. On Wednesday night, I, I used to go to something called family, well, Bible study on Wednesday night. What would night. you have been doing on a Monday at in that, February when it was time? At age 15. At 9. Wow. Shortly thereafter. 9 a.m. or shortly thereafter. Um, I would be in grade 10. In, okay. in school, well, as an Augustine's college. Well, he was not dressed for school. We don't know why. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. All so right. it just shows you, you know, the issues we have. And I, I always point to um, the social issues that we're faced with. And when you listen to the video, someone is identifying, identifying him as little man, or whatever that's supposed to mean. All right? I don't know if that's, a, if that's an alias or if that's the way he's But if his he's mother addressed. didn't name him, little man, then it is it's an alias, an alias yeah. and an alias is a necessary, a bad, thing. A bad name. Yeah. He may he, just be called little man because he's a small person. And looks like a little man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyhow. But now the question has to be had. What is this 15 year old doing at that hour? Clad the way he was and then became a target of whoever. A greater the point question also needs to be asked. Down. Why do we have people driving in this country and shooting people? Yeah, I mean, I don't yeah. care the fact that he was bareback, had on short pants, who had the right to drive through that corner and murder him? What kind of society are we running? Yeah, it's unfortunate. But um, um, a lot of things need to be corrected so we can deal with this issue. And like I say, we just, it just goes right back to the home. He's 15. He's from a home. He has, a, he has parents or a parent who is watching after him. But he's um, you know, just clad with a short pants, no uniform, no socks, no shoes, no pants, no shirt, no bag in his hand headed to school. But he did not, it, no one had a right to murder him. We understand that, yeah. Sandra. So let's, let's we understand get that. that. Notwithstanding that he was not in school, we don't know why he was not in school, no one had a right to murder him. Yeah, yeah, no one has that. a right to drive into a neighborhood. I'm very familiar with First Street to Grove. 
So no one has a right to drive through First Street to grow up and terrorize a neighborhood. All right? Yeah. And terrorize a neighborhood. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, it would be interesting to find out why he was not in school, which obviously um, it calls for an investigation. You have a video? Yes, let us see the okay. video. Okay. Everybody good? Yes. Good morning, members of the press. Good morning to persons who are viewing via the various social media platforms. Sometime around 9 a.m., officers from the Grove Police Station heard gunshots being disseminated on First Street. The officers responded on foot, and once to this area, they were directed to the body of a male with multiple gunshot injuries to the body. Information received, the victim was along with an older sibling when a group, small great Japanese vehicle pulled alongside them. A male emerged with a high-powered weapon, firing multiple gunshots and striking the 15-year-old teen. His older sibling was unharmed during the incident and was able to make good his escape. The older sibling is assisting us with this investigation. And so we do make an appeal to members of the public yet again, to persons who may have been in the immediate area. You may have seen a small Japanese vehicle traveling north on First Street onto Palm Tree Avenue. We're asking you to kindly reach out to the officers of the Criminal Investigations Department, provide us with the necessary information so that we can bring this matter to a close within a relatively short period of time. It is unacceptable. We have a 15-year-old teen who has not even yet lived. Teen who is probably just about to make his way ready to go to school. And so members of the public, you have an obligation to assist your police department with this investigation. I also want to say at this time I have the chief of CID with me, Chief Superintendent Michael Johnson. I also have the officer or the second IC, I should say, in charge of the Grove Police Station with me, Superintendent Keith Ferguson. And at this time, I'm going to allow him to speak to you basically on what measures or what strategies he's going to put in place now to ensure that this type of incident does not reoccur within this community. And then if you have any additional questions for me, I will take them. Good morning, all. Uh, we are stepping up our patrols um, in this community, uh, foot patrols, mobile patrols. We also are communicating with our, um, the residents of the community. Um, we are a part of this community. Uh, you know, and we, just something like this should never happen um, in this country, you know. Uh, we also are doing community events. Actually, tomorrow we are having a, uh, a march and a walkthrough prayer session. Uh, through the, uh, the Grove area, uh, Angleston area. Uh, we're starting at 6 p.m. Uh, we'll start at the Katie Josie uh, uh, Church, and then it will commence at the uh, Mother Park Park. Park. We're inviting all the community to come out. Um, but we are appealing um, conflict resolution is needed. We need to talk um, about our differences. We do need to pick up a, a gun, a knife, you don't need the office. That's a conversation. We all are family. We all are related, you know. But it can take a community effort for us to curve this monster called crime in the Bahamas. It can take a community effort. And um, we, 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 uh, we're going to be um, direct in our, uh, our patrols, our stop and search, um, intelligence. We need the public to help us with intelligence. Okay? Um, we can do our best on a daily basis, nightly basis, 24 hours. We can be working and doing what we need to do. Make this a safer community. Full name and title, please. That would be Keith Ferguson, Superintendent of the Police, Second IC in Charge, Grove Police Station. you have any questions for me, Mrs. Yes, yes. Um, Ms. Kippins, are you able to say if the we're brother from, was the um, intended target? Uh, at this time, we're not certain who was the intended target at this time. And so, as I always ask you to, you know, ask.
And then, of course, um, we also heard from the officer in charge of the, of the Grove Police Station, um, Superintendent Ferguson, I hope I heard his name correctly, who's also announced that they're going to have a march tomorrow. But as we reported to you, the killing of the 15-year-old um, just to the west of where this incident took place is where the Coconut Grove Police Station is located. And the Coconut Grove Police Station, it extends from Blue Hill Road on the west to First Street on the east, including um, they have this, it's like a park there. And all I'm attempting to, to express to you is how close it is to the police station. And notwithstanding that, there is no fear and um, it's a very sad situation which has occurred and so it would be very interesting to find out why the young man was not in school. This is Freedom Match. Bradley Roll is my spiritual advisor. What a sad day on the island of New Providence. God save the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. God save our King, King Charles III and the entire Royal Family, we'll be right back after the break. Hold on, everybody. It's powerful today. Well, let's do our first ad, and then we go back to some of the things that are happening here in our Bahamas. Catch Western Air's early bird flight to Fort Lauderdale daily, departing Nassau at 7 a.m. Your check bag and carry on are free no change or cancellation fees apply visit www.westernairbahamas.com to book today and that is powerful so we thank you for that we are receiving reports that as it relates to the Negro, 15-year-old youth who was murdered this morning, that he is believed to be a student of A of Adelaide. We have also been informed that there was no school for A of Adelaide students and a number of other senior government school students as a result of a game, the Hugh Campbell game, that they have going on, perhaps at AF Adderley. And so from Friday of last week up until Monday, the 19th of February, no school. And that school will commence on Tuesday, the 20th of February. And that is why that young man was available, vulnerable located on that corner at a point when I thought school was in session. So um, perhaps we now have to say to those who um, disrupt the schools every year for these significant games that they better find some place to house these students because we can see now um, the games, I hate to say it, um, and I won't say it since I hate to see it, say it, but that is what I've been told, that the 15-year-old youth was not in school because of the Hugh Campbell basketball games, all right? I'll come back to some more of this, but the woman living in Grand Bahama, she's been on my case. Uh, she, apparently, she's very concerned over my pronunciation of the machine that is used to examine women breasts for cancer. And so she has contacted me to say, if I'm unable to pronounce it correctly, she would want me to say to Dr. Michael Davil that the machine to examine women's breasts for tumor and or cancer is not working. 
and it would be very expensive for the woman them to have to come to Nassau. So that is what she says, and she was teaching me the pronunciation. So I thank God for the thousands of citizens who are willing to educate me. And so she said, I must call it a mama gram. So if you see the health minister, Dr. Michael Davil, I want him to know that the mama gram, the machine that is used to on women to determine if they have breast cancer or tumor is not working and the woman them have been complaining. So my dear, I hope that I did pronounce it correctly. And while I have Dr. Davil's attention, I'm very disturbed by a young woman who wants a job at the public hospital authority and from everything she told me, she seems to be qualified and she can get no one to respond to her application, no one to bring her on. And she's very, very upset. And so I've indicated to her, I'm upset because there must be could be somebody who could answer her and say to her, Yes, the job is available. No, the job isn't available. Or we can create some space for you. So for heaven's sake, whoever in the public hospital authority, would you please respond to applicants? Because they blame in Dr. Michael Davil. And I thought that the hospital authority is, you know, autonomous. So I think. So let me say that for the lady, and then perhaps I may deal with one who's complaining over how she's qualified to work, perhaps at the Sandlands Rehabilitation Center, because of her skills and the frustration she is having. So I will have to deal with that as well. Well, having said that, um, there's a shocking news involving a police officer. This police officer, it is alleged that he and a number, perhaps one, maybe two, Negro citizens, the officer is reported to have been off duty and they decided that they will get their guns and perhaps go on a mission of drive-by shooting. Can you imagine that? An officer of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. When I received that intelligence, you may not believe me, tears came out of my eyes. I said to myself, boy, you're getting old. I became so emotional and said, what the hell wrong with this policeman? And so it's a good thing that the government also has, as a part of the forces doing saturation patrol, uh, exploits from His Majesty's Defense Force. So Defense Force officers, if I understand this story, clearly they spotted this Japanese vehicle, I think it is. They became suspicious and they decide that they would see if they could intercept it. And the next thing, they start firing bullets, if I understand it correctly, allegedly at the Defense Force. Well. I want you to know that the Defense Force are well trained. They're very trained. And so they pursued them until they crashed and they were subsequently arrested, only to be given a shock that the lead man who was arrested happens to be an officer of the Royal Bahamas Police Force. Now, look what else happened. If you are arrested and you have been found in possession of weapons, high-powered weapons, guns, ammunition, but one of the first things that the police will do is what? Go to your home with a warrant of search. So they went to his home. I won't tell you where they reported his home is, but it's a 
upper class area, a nice area. It's, it's a community that I yearned to see more citizens live there. And they went, they executed the search warrant, and the next thing that happened, the police found a gun. Now his ma locked up. Ah. Can you imagine it? That in our criminal mind and the foolishness that we do, we cause a ma. So he is alleged to have been a part of a maneuver in drive-by shooting. Now his ma locked up. It's a very sad situation, and I call on young people everywhere. It is a disgrace to lock up your ma. You heard me? It is a disgrace to cause your ma to get locked up. It's a disgrace to cause your pa to get locked up. Right? And um, I have to be careful how I say it, but mother is locked up. Now, my spiritual advisor, knowing his argument, he is going to suggest that the home is at fault. Well, we don't know. We don't uh, know all the details of this incident as well, sir. So when, when children or adults go astray, he blames it on the home. So what else are you, you going to blame it on? Well, certainly then, you're not willing to say that the mother is responsible for that gun. Well, listen. The reality is we don't know um, the particulars of this incident, but remember the saying, and I'm not casting judgment on anyone. There's this saying um, the old folks have, they say when you chip a block, the chip don't go far from the block. Now, let me warn you. Now, I'm just... <laughs> let me warn now, you. I'm just saying. My spiritual advisor, All if right? tomorrow I became so I don't know. a drive-by shooter, how dare you suggest that my ma is a drive-by shooter? See, that's what I'm telling you that we don't know. We just have to go back when we see these things happening, go back to the home. That's where it all starts, ah. you know? So if you have a good father that produces good children as a result of good upbringing, they become good citizens. All right, so the, ch the child is like the parent. There's no exception to the rules. You know what I'm saying? There's no exception. And if you don't pay attention to your kids. My spiritual advisor. Uh, they, 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 that, they, that they, they go astray that, and that go correct That is not totally true. Many, the, I say 99% of the wombs of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas are blessed wombs, good wombs, but they bear bad children. And they did everything no, 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 to high. whip them in line and it, it have can't them, be 99%, them they have gone astray. Certainly, um, we only have a few bad apples, man. That's what I'm saying. Ninety-nine percent of, of the worms are good. Okay, okay. That's what okay. I'm saying. Okay, so and so I'm it. saying to you, you cannot blame mothers and fathers because there are many fathers who tell the media, "I told that boys say from them." So what, what causes people? the one percent to go stray? It's just. Nature. The one percent who went astray, they went astray because the there political authority refused to carry out the law. That's why. If you know that you're going to be punished, right? I'll give you an example. I'm talking in parable. And anybody who knows me thinks that I'm talking about them. I'm not! So, All right. So don't use that parable then. I, I have to use this parable because <laughs> this is the parable in my mind. <laughs> I have a friend who's very, very upset. I look at the friend. Um, he flew in from Grand Bahama. And the next thing I know, he called upon me. And so we talk and he, be, he he's upset. So I said, you were upset. Why are you upset? Things bad in Grand Bahama. He say, no, t things isn't bad. He say, but my friend just got convicted of rape. So I said, real rape? He said, yes. And I'm devastated. So I said, well, I can understand that, but t t t he's been convicted of rape. Did you go to court? 
He said, no, he ain't been to court. I said, you don't know what the evidence is. He said, you don't know. I said, well, you're going you to have to accept that he was convicted. He said, but I'm distraught. I can't believe my friend would rape. And he's distraught. So the point that I make is how we all have to be responsible because we can have emotional effects, not only on relatives, because I had to ask him, is he a blood relative? No. He said, but he's my friend, and I, I've known him from in primary school, and I'm shocked that he has been convicted of rape. And the worst thing for the man is he even didn't know his friend was charged with rape. Yeah. So I just thought I'd share that to tell people how they have to be responsible. Now you're doing crime and your mother get locked up. Nobody mother is supposed to be locked up as a result of any crime they involved in. All right? I'll, I don't, I won't reveal the name of the man today, um, but perhaps if God spent my life this whole week, I'll tell you of a man who mother committed a crime. It's so emotional as I think about it. Do you know, he told the police, my mother didn't do that, and his mother was a thug. His mother was a gangster. And I'm saddened as I think about it. Um, so that he told the police that he committed the crime. He refused to let the police arrest his mother and present her to a court. He went to jail for his ma, and he went for a long time. Oh boy. He went to jail for a long time. He said, I can't let my ma go to prison. So I said that to say to young people, how you could act so irresponsibly to cause your ma to be charged. Go ahead, my spiritual advisor. Yeah, well, that's the, I was gonna get to that point. Um, in that we know that if the police comes to a home, with a cause, and they um, are, are able to conduct a search, and they find um, well, illegal or unlicensed firearms or drugs or whatever have you. Whoever's home in the house at the time, I believe that they, they would lock them up until someone says, listen, you know what? These are my drugs, all right? Now, once you say the drugs belong to you, then I believe the law enforcement officers would decide to um, let everybody else. What if Mama? This is, this is what I believe. Now I'm not sure. This, this what is if what Mama happens. tried to flush the drugs? <laughs> That's a different story. She may be doing it because she's trying to protect the child. I don't know. Okay. Um, you know, but um, in this case, I don't know exactly what the details. Are. I didn't read the story. I should read it actually. But if the police did a search and they found, you know, illegal weapons or drugs, whatever of you. Then whoever was home, you know, they take them in for questioning. Now, like you say, you know, if it was me, um, my, my mother's 84, right? And if the police comes to the house and I'm there and something is wrong, I won't let my mother be arrested. Even though you don't live there? No. You don't live with your ma? No. I, and the police find... <laughs> yeah, gun in the house. I get that, please. That's mine, man. You going to jail? Because my mother's 84. Well, my ma better don't try that on me. <laughs> I get that, please. That's I'm mine, man. I'm prepared to tell the commissioner of police it wasn't my gun. Boy, no, boy. My, my mother's 84. Nah, I, I, I can't. Mama has a gun. She's going to jail for herself. I can't let that happen. Though. And if mama is selling dope. Well, I said because I know the Because I don't smoke dope. Eh? I said because I know. Mama will have to go to jail. For her own dope. And I do love mama. But I ain't going to jail for mama. I love your mother. You think I <laughs> crazy <laughs> to be living a decent life. And I can let my mom 
cost me to go to jail? Hell take, no. You ain't gonna take one for the team. No, sir. <laughs> no. <laughs> but <laughs> if you want to do it, you go to jail. But mama gonna have to go to jail for oh, herself. Oh man. She ain't cost me to go to jail. Because <laughs> she's supposed to be responsible. Well, time. Yeah. Yeah. But well, that's unfortunate. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. Well, yeah. yeah, such is life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you would recall on Friday, um, we were tempted to show you a video involving a man that they allege is homeless. And we would have pointed out to you that he was sitting at the entrance of the old St. John's College, a college of the Anglican Church, which after they would have relocated St. John's College in the late 70s, early 80s to its existing campus, that place was used as an institution in the war against drugs. So there were many men and women who were drug addicts, cocaine addicts, marijuana addicts. They were allowed to live there to be rehabilitated. And so there was a group of teenagers who attacked him. And the video was all over social media. And we are happy to report that at least two of the Negro youths have been called to account for their behavior, and they have been taken into lawful custody, and the authorities, if they have not found their other co-accused, they are searching for them. And um, the minister responsible for social services is the Honorable Miles LaRoda, who was very shocked and upset over what the young people has done. And he has pointed out that social services is currently housing that homeless man, but has suggested that it, it can only be done for a certain period. Well, if that is so, it means he will return to an environment that has been very hostile. You would recall that perhaps last week I started to give you a story of how there are many people who are homeless and when the weather change and it becomes very cold, they have no place to go out of the cold. And when it rains for days and nights, there is no place to provide them with shelter. Yet, the government has identified every zone places where you can go in the event of a storm, of a hurricane. Well, if you can have a place that you can go to at the beginning of June, the end of June, in preparation for the hurricane season, whenever it comes, well, certainly there ought to be a place for homeless people. There ought to be a place where people can go to seek refuge when it is cold. Because I'm going to give you a story. I came out of this studio one Friday night, and I was shocked of how cold it was. It was cold. And so um, I'm happy that Miles LaRoda is dealing with it. But I think we need to go a little bit further in terms to find housing. Perhaps Miles LaRoda should meet with the Christian Council. There are many Christian denominations who only use the church on Saturday or use it on Sunday. And then after the church service, the huge building is closed down. But it would make a beautiful place with a nice blanket to lay down and sleep. And of course, social service perhaps can have the Defense Force officer um, people from the Department of Social Services, maybe a nurse, a sign, whenever that is going to happen. But look at all the churches we have. I've been invited about two years ago 
to a church someplace in the back of Carmichael Road. It was the biggest, one of the biggest church that I've seen. And what I like about that church, I never said it to them because I have to be careful that I'm not sinning. I have to be careful that I'm not making a mistake. But what I like about that church, when I entered the church, the church was like an upstairs church. And I did observe that a particular woman didn't want to pray downstairs. And when people were not watching me, I watch her, like she was going closer to heaven to pray. And as I looked at it, it dawned on me, these are some beautiful um, churches where people who are homeless, people who are in distress, could sleep. And the authorities provide the necessary protection, the necessary janitorial services to ensure that the churches are still well kept, still maintained. We need to start, think about that, and I really hope that Miles Naruto can do more than just giving this guy a day or two, because um, if I look hard, I can show you a photograph of a Negro man who sat at a certain street corner, and every day they stoned him. Every day they chopped him in his face many, many years ago. And I was shocked when he died. And his family came looking for me and said, we have been told that you have a picture. And I said to them, you don't want that picture. And they said, yes, we want the picture because we ain't got no picture. So I gave them a gruesome picture of the various um, wounds and chop, which healed, but you could see the scar. And it was just terrible what he was exposed to. Um. Anyway, let's pray for the homeless. Let's get on the government to find and meet with the Christian Council that they may perhaps open their churches and all their halls in cases of emergency. This is Fiddle March. God save the homeless. God save young people. May they change their heart and do well. Welcome back to Freedom March. My name is Rodney Monker. Bradley Roll is my spiritual advisor. And um, I just had a lady who called me. Guess what she called me? Well, thank you for mentioning the homeless. Okay, my dear, I'm gonna mention them some more. But it's birthday time. Um, you want to lead up? Yeah, let's, let's do these birthdays uh, quickly. Uh, we got a couple birthdays. And what, one anniversary? Two? One? All right. So who's up first? This young man. Okay, so we want to wish a uh, happy birthday, ninth birthday to Damien. Sorry, to Marion. To Marion. It's coming from your mom and your dad and your two sisters, okay? So happy happy birthday um, to the Marion. Um, hope you enjoy the rest of your birthday. Um, also, we want to wish a happy birthday to Anthony Curtis Jr. Anthony Curtis Jr. is celebrating his birthday today. Uh, birthday greetings coming to you from your family and your friends. Um, happy birthday to you, and we hope you live to enjoy many, many more. Anthony Curtis Jr. Um, and of course, we want to wish a happy birthday to Lillian Smith, who is celebrating her birthday today. It's coming from her only son, Keith, her two daughters, Indrid and Alicia Smith, her two grandsons, uh, brother in law, P.S. Luther Smith, her daughter in law, Julia, her sister, uh, Gertlane, Annie, and Patricia, all our family members and friends, especially the Annex Baptist Church members. So happy birthday to Lillian Smith. Okay, great. Uh, hope you live to enjoy many, many more. So we want to wish also a happy birthday to uh, Mr. Godfrey Leon Brown, coming from his children and grandchildren, all who love him. Um, happy birthday, enjoy your birthday, and we hope you live to enjoy many more. Um, okay, let me, sorry, uh, did I lose that page? All right, who's next? Uh, this young lady, okay, so happy birthday, Charlotte. 
um, to Skylar Davis, is coming from Mother Sherelle, um, from Nana Florian and Makia, and Marius also Nene. Happy birthday uh, goes out to Skylar Davis. Enjoy your birthday. All the best. You're beautiful. Hmm? All right, so who else is next? All right, go ahead, Rodney. You're next. Well, um, happy birthday to Jamal Pinder of Hatchet Bay Elutra. It comes to him from his mom, Christine Ba, and his sister, Cornelia Ba, and his brother, Cornelius Ba Jr., his aunts and uncle, and particularly his favorite aunt, Lena Johnson. This is powerful. Okay. Well, on Friday, you would recall that I told you that I was invited to a banquet in which Bishop William Thompson, he would have celebrated his 80th birthday, um, and it was held at the Coral Towers of Atlantis, and he had some very um, big time officials who came to celebrate it with him. Among those persons who came was Her Excellency Governor General Cynthia Pratt, Prime Minister Philip Davis. We saw the Lord Bishop of the Anglican Church, Lige Bird, and his wife. Lige Bird. Um, we also saw there, um, Bishop Neil Ellis, Bishop Simeon Hall, and quite a number of distinguished guests. So I want to wish him a happy birthday, and I want to thank him for the invitation that was extended to myself and my colleague, Marcus Luby. We had a wonderful, wonderful time the former Prime Minister Perry Christie. He was among the celebrities who um, saluted William Thompson. Um, it turned out that Mr. Christie is older than Bishop William Thompson. Christie is already 80, and Bishop William Thompson, I think, didn't turn 80 until Sunday passed. So Mr. Christie spoke, um, Prime Minister Philip Davis spoke, and a number of other distinguished citizens. So it was a great time at Atlantis, and I wish um, Bishop William Thompson a happy, happy birthday. And I want the public to know that Bishop William Thompson happens to be one of the people them. Happy birthday, Bishop William Thompson. And I think it is powerful. Yes. We have an anniversary, right? Do we? Go ahead, if we do. Huh? Oh, oh yeah, so we want to send a um, um, today, uh, happy birthday. Young man, uh, somebody sent this in. Happy birthday to you. Um, all the best to you coming from your family and friends. They didn't give a name, so we're sorry about that, okay? So happy birthday to this young man. Um, we hope you live to enjoy many, many more. Um, yeah, the wedding anniversary, I think we have to do is well. Ah, there you go. We want to send a happy wedding anniversary to Mr. and Mrs. Adero Bo. Congra congratulations from her mom, Gertley and Dan, her two sisters, Greta, and Trina, her baby boy, Zaire, in-laws, the Boas and Dean's family, and her co-workers at Colleen Insurance Company. So happy birthday, happy second anniversary, sorry. Happy second wedding anniversary to Mr. and Mrs. Adario Bo. Congratulations, all the best. We hope you live to enjoy many more anniversaries, and may you stay together until death do you part. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Medusa. I think we are done with birthdays and anniversaries for the day. We are? Yes, we are. This I'm almost certain that we are. This is powerful. Is there a topic that you want before I run on? 
You go ahead, man. Okay, this is powerful. Sorry? Right. Here's another more. one. Oh, from Friday, okay. Um, I don't remember that one. We'll do it tomorrow, okay, fine, not a problem. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Producer. Yeah. You will recall that on Friday, I spoke about the former Prime Minister, Dr. Hubert Minnis, and I have begun to talk about him in view of the fact that he has a desire to see crime intervention. And so I decided that in view of the fact that he went into the Honorable House of Assembly where he is governed by privilege. But for most citizens, Parliament does not have absolute privilege. And a member of Parliament does not have absolute privilege. We may think that they have. Because over the last 50 years, that was what we were taught that Parliament was supreme, that Parliament was not necessarily subjected to the law, and um, that a member of Parliament could just go in, produce documents, slander, and so forth, and so on. So you would recall that I drew to your attention that while the Minister of National Security was outside of the country, Minis allege some very serious and scandalous allegation against Wayne Monroe. And he has caused me to have to think about his history. And I started off by pointing out to you that by 2007, when Hubert Ingram returned to power, he appointed Dr. Minnis, the Minister of Health, with a caveat attached to it. And that caveat was you had to release, terminate the contract which you got from the previous administration, which would have been the PLP, and they had rented from Dr. Minnis his clinic. I want you to show those clinic again. I pointed that out. And I also pointed out that Dr. Minnis, notwithstanding that Ingram had told him to get rid of the contract, he held on to the contract without parliamentary approval. That's a fact, can be proven. In addition to that, in the election of 2007, Dr. Minnis hid that information, never disclosed it. Now, that record is a part of the Gazette. And on every election, newspapers are required to publish whatever documents a member of parliament submits to the returning officer on nomination day. And then that becomes a part of the cassette, the historic records, the law. So you will not see where Minnis made any disclosure. 2012, he did not disclose. And you would recall that um, it is only as I agitated him leading into the 2017 election and thereafter that in the election of 2021, it was the first time the Dr. Minnis disclosed, and it was then Member of Parliament for Elizabeth Estate, Dr. Duane Sands, who told the media that Minnis has now disclosed. So that is a violation of the rules of the House. You would also recall that I had pointed out that Dr. Minnis was 
a shareholder in Brent Seminidem family vault. I pointed that out. And I also produced the evidence to demonstrate it, that my management here was so shocked that they sent an emissary and demanded that I produce the file. And I was more than happy, because all I had was file. And I always knew that you could be called upon to see if you are a liar, to see if you're misleading, to see if you are ignorant. And I couldn't have that. Now, when Dr. Minnis became a shareholder and continued to hold on to them share, the law made it clear that you can't be a shareholder, a parliamentarian, and the boat has the mail bag. Queen Monroe must conduct an investigation to see if the law has been contravened. I read the law, but I read it not as a learned person. I don't. I merely do it as a layman. And I'm looking at the law. It says the minister may establish and maintain a shipping service between places within the Bahamas and for that purpose subject to the provisions of this act and with the prior approval of the Governor General may enter into any contract for a period of not less than one year or more than 10 years for the operation of shipping services between, between any place, any places within the Bahamas and may provide for the payment of subsidies, therefore, to any contractor, any such contractor shall contain such provisions as the Minister for Posts and Telecommunications deem necessary for the carrying of mails. And the Minister shall contract for and on behalf of the Government of the Bahamas provided that no such contract shall be entered into with any minister either directly or indirectly or with any company owned or controlled by any minister. All right? Now, in 2017, there was a statement made about ministers. And the statement shows Minnis was or is the third largest shareholder. Anglistan Member of Parliament, Glennis Hannah Martin, I'm reading the statement, yesterday accused the government, meaning the FNM, of indirectly subsidizing Bahamas Ferries Limited a private company in which Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis has shares. By and large, Fast Ferries is in the mail boat business, Hannah Martin declared during debate on two amendments bill aimed at changing the dormant account regime. However, Minister of Agriculture and Marines resources, Renwood Belts, refuted the claim, stating that while a subvention is paid to Pacific Mail Boat operators, the government has no standing contract with mail boats operators. Responding to Hannah Martin, 
Dr. Minnis, the then Prime Minister, confirmed he has shares in Bahamas Ferries, Commonwealth, Bury Limited, CIBC, First Caribbean, among other entities in the Bahamas and abroad. However, he stressed, and I quote Dr. Mendes, I am not involved in the management, the day-to-day -day, uh, assessments of any of them. Full stop. According to documents obtained by Eyewitness News, Dr. Minnis has 305 shares in Bahamas Ferries, the third largest share holdings, and annual statement dated March 2017 shows that the top two shareholders at the time were the Seminet Group Limited with 2,021 shares and We Shipping Limited with 2,020 shares. Hannah Martin said she knew of, the, of at least two government subsidized mailboat operators who have done, who have partnerships. Hannah Martin says she knows about at least two operators who have partnerships with, me, with Bahamas Ferries. It is unthinkable says Mrs. Martin, that the Fast Ferries Company, which is a multi-million dollar commercial entity, is a beneficiary of a subsidy from the public purse, Mrs. Hannah said. That is unheard of. Therefore, let me repeat it again, that is unheard of. There are at least two companies benefiting. They're benefiting from the partnership in this way. I cannot believe the government is subsidizing fast ferries in this country. A large, a larger issue is the domination of this company in family island routes, says Glennis Hannah Martin, which is driving out traditional mail boats. This is what they are doing. They are driving them out of business and then they are entering partnerships with them. I know what's happening. I saw it happening, says Glennis Hannah Martin. The member for Sudden Shores knows, and the member for Sudden Shores at that point was Frankie Campbell, Frankie has two passports, so you will know who I'm meaning. Rising to his feet, Dr. Hubert Minnis, rising to his feet, Dr. Hubert Minnis repeated, and I quote, I have shares in many companies, both in the Bahamas and throughout the world. I do not know anything about the day today running of any of them. Full stop, end quote. Opposition leader Philip Brave Davis, who is now prime minister, said, while he accepts Dr. Minnis has no involvement in the day-to-day -day operations of the company, once it comes to the prime minister's attention that the company in which he has shares has an interest in a government contract, he has a duty to find out. Davis said if Dr. Minnis confirms that to be the case, he must come to Parliament and request to be exempted in accordance with the law. Wells said there is no evidence to support Bahamas ferries approaching the government for a contract. If Fast Ferries has approached a mail boat operator, or if a mail boat operator has approached Fast Ferries, that is a completely different scenario than what the members is currently putting forward, as if 
Fast Ferries has approached the government of the Bahamas for a contract. The minister said, under Article 49 of the Constitution, a member of the House shall vacate his seat if he becomes interested in any government contract unless the member before becoming interested in such a contract or as soon as practicable after becoming interested discloses his interest and the host agrees to an exemption. To Davis, Dr. Minnis said, and I quote, I have said I also have shares in CIBC. I can't recall that government would have been involved in borrowing monies from CIBC. Government never came to me and asked whether there was a conflict, you know. I had nothing to do with it. The government got the money. So, was that a conflict too? Davis replied, certainly. Minister of Social Services Frankie Campbell, the former Minister of Transport, added that no new mail boat contracts have been signed under the Minister's administration. During my tenure, I had several meetings to begin the negotiations for the renewal of contracts, so I am not aware of any new contracts, he said. But if you have the mail bag and you are delivering the mail bag and the government is paying you, you don't need to put that in writing. That's a contract. It's a contract. And that is unlawful. And that calls for criminal investigation. I call on Vin Monroe as Minister of National Security to do crime intervention. And this crime intervention calls for an investigation into Dr. Minister's past conduct. This is Freedom March. God save the Commonwealth. Gladstone Road and the Lazaretta Road um, is filled with spilled co the coconut um, barks and stuff like that. And even though it seems as if the person who's running that um, fair he cleans right around him, but he pushes the rest of it into a neighbor's yard, and it's extremely smelly. It's not good at all. I That's wonder what the health people are doing. Um, who is Thank your? You so who, much. Hold on a second. Who is your MP? It should be Warren Miller. Okay, and you've had no opportunity to give him a little call. Yes, I did. He doesn't answer the phone. When I call him, he hasn't answered, and he gave me his number. Okay, I, I shall communicate with him. Is it near the entrance to Lazaretto? Yeah, not exactly, but yes, in that same area on the deep bend, you know. Oh, elbow, yes, yes. Elbow and come yes, yes. Okay. Right. Thank you so much. All right, you're welcome, my love. I, I'll talk to Mr. Warren Miller. 323 Welcome to Freedom March Call. You're live. Yes, sir. I'm calling concerning some lights. We're supposed to put up on the park in Stable and Gardens on Lickman Road. Okay. Um, who is your MP? Mikhail Barnaby. Well, I expect to see Mikhail because he's going to join me tomorrow on the show. Wait a minute, I ain't finished yet. Okay. He been around straight through. I'm not putting that on him. He's been around doing what he got to do. And he right? ain't fixed the life? But before the holidays, he gone MIA. From the holidays... What MIA stand for? Pardon? What does the word MIA stand for? Missing in action. Ain't really? Him right here. Well, he can be here with me tomorrow, so you make sure you stay Call tuned. Call tomorrow. All right? He's going to join me tomorrow. Mikhail Bonaby? I didn't hear. What did you say? He's, he's a what? He's going to come on TV with me tomorrow. Oh, he's coming on TV with you? Yeah, so you have all your questions um, written down. I'm, I'm going to... What is that? Better now? 
No, no, no. This station right here, I, um, ILTV Studios, Freedom Match. This is not ZNS. Okay, this is where he'll be. He'll be right here. Okay. With Monka, okay? Miss Monka. Yeah, that's me. He wasn't around from before the holidays. Will you, here. will you put it to him when he comes no, tomorrow. here tomorrow? Okay? This time tomorrow. Um, I told him to be in studio no later than 4.30. All right, sir. Okay? Thank you so much. You're, You're welcome. welcome. My love. Take care. What, what? Yes. How are you doing, my brother? Listen, I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. This month, I got two questions for you, right? Okay. Now, listen to me good. When people call you, your station, your, your home of the man, why you ask them, call your MP? They call you. They, you don't think they try to get in touch with the MP? Um, I, I, it's very important when they would have complained to me for me to encourage them to contact their MP. I want MPs to know what the plight of their supporters are so that they and I together will try to correct it. That's all. Yeah, but then again, some, some, some of the people, they go there and they vote for their, for the people there, but they don't know who they're voting for, okay? Well, I can assure you that the majority of the people them they know who they're voting for. I am perhaps the only politician who went to the poll as a voter to vote, and I had a difficulty. Um, I, I was having eye problems, and all I asked them to show me um, who's the member of parliament for Bainstown. Bainstown? Yeah. Bainstown? Uh-huh. Mr. Um, Watson. Watson. Wade yeah, Watson. Wade Watson, yeah. Yeah, but then, Mr. Monka, everybody in the whole Bahamas, and then you talking about uh, what, the, what the guy named Duck and Dabble. Who's, who's Nobody could ever catch up with Duck and Darville. That is not true. What did you call him? Mr. Darville has... I call his name right. Duck and Darville, not Mr. No. Darville. Dr. Li Darville? Are you going to listen to me? If you're not going to listen to me, then I'm going to have to tell you goodbye. And you always telling me goodbye. That is nothing strange. Okay. Um, <laughs> Dr. Darville, I'm in contact with Dr. Darville. Um... I shall say to him, are you a constituent of his? Yes, sir. I will say to him that one of his constituents is trying to reach him. When we hang up, could you send me a secret number for you? No, I don't be secret. I don't be secret. You want to give me your number on TV? Yeah. Okay, well, hold on a second. Let me get out my pen. Um, and I thank you because... I needed a good excuse to go look for Dr. Dowell. No, Dr. Dowell. That's why. Uh, Dr. Dowell. You ain't safe. What's your name? <laughs> What's your name? What's my name? Yeah. My name is Stephen Brister. Stephen. Spell Brister for me. You can't spell Brister. You think you've been to college? I didn't go to college. I went as far as CC Sweeting and they throw me out. Why not CC Sweeting to college? Come, man. Man, you won't say it, man. You won't say it. Anyway, you almost cost me to curse. You and Dr. Darvel, all of you are going to stop ducking people. Do well for my Negro brother. <laughs> ah, it's just amazing, these f &Ms. Anybody else to call? Call me! <laughs> yeah. I thought he wanted Dr. Darvel. He wants to attack Dr. Darvel. 323 <laughs> 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 Welcome to Freedom Mars, Call You Live. <laughs> Hello, Call You there? Welcome to Freedom Mars, Call All right, Santa. So we don't have any more yeah. calls. Anyhow, um, what was this complaint? We got a call? Welcome to Freedom Mars, Call You Live. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. First time caller. Yes, ma'am. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Yes. Please let him know he needs to do something with Pinewood Park. That's a jungle. Pinewood okay? Park. Yes, right by the roundabout. Okay. The jungle. Pinewood Park. Which roundabout? The roundabout up, up from the police station. Okay. Tell him I try the MP, everybody, and Beach and Park from 2020. What is wrong with the park? You go there and you'll see the trees. 
To but still, west. give me an idea. Give me an idea. To the west. You go to the west and use the Jogan Trail and see if anyone can see you behind those trees on the park and oh. on the Jogan Trail. Okay. Off from Whit Police Station, though. South Beach Police Station, you come straight up. Oh, 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 yes. That one right Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank You're welcome. You so much. You're welcome. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. 323 is the number to call, 698 All who needs the assistance of Mr. Bonneby, call me now. That's powerful. 698 698-0775-698-0776. We still got about 10 more minutes. Welcome to Freedom oh, Watch, brother. Like, I would like for them to speak about the, um, the Eastern Road. What happening on the Eastern Road? When you drive on the Eastern Road on here, bam! What, yeah, they're the they, they firing gun? Just a lot of holes, sir. Really? Breaking up the cars, Jeep, who's the, even the boat. Who's the MP for the Eastern Road? I'm not too sure. I would like for you to find out and let them know, please, to help us fix the road. I get the impression it's Adrian White. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, Adrian White. He's a nice white guy, Adrian White. He's Conky Joe. Talk to him to help us, please. I'll talk to Adrian White. He's Conky Joe, and him and I, you know, yes, sir. We, we, we belong to the same group. So which part of the Eastern Road are you referring to? I'm talking about uh, right after St. Anne's Hill. Okay. Okay. Around Mount Vernon. Yes, yes, yes. It yeah, is that, bad there. That sound like... Yes. Um, it is bad That sounds like... He's right. Yeah. Yes, sir. It sounds like Adrian White. I'll talk to Adrian and let him know that he better go find the Minister of Works to pave the road. How that sound? Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. This is that powerful. Adrian place, White, for heaven's sake, man, go find the Minister of Works and get that road paved. All right? It's the Eastern Road. And I don't want them conky Joe falling in any hole. And this is powerful. Welcome to Freedom Marsh Call. You're live. Uh, Mr. Monka, on so, Eastern Road. Yes, sir. Hey, Rodney, that just crossed my mind. You Go. might have forgot about this. When minutes come for you again on the FNM? Yeah. Remember when NASA went to that big riot? Yeah. And only you and Motherfucker are going go in there. That is true. I tell them that. Where they been? I don't know. Big ride in Bain Town? I don't know where they been. Green Slade go in with the boys that they didn't want to see you or Green and Green Slade calm them down. That is true. Uh, when Bain, I remember that's when they were burning up the police cars. They didn't want to see, could they trust you and Mother Pratt? I, I, I want the Minister of National Security to have you as the head of CI, I mean CI, confidential information because you don't drink around. I mean, you don't talk. You, we need CI, they need CI on the ground in every every area. Because you can pay their rent. The woman, woman knows any business. They ain't talking for free. And they know you, 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 you the deep freeze. You don't drink rum. They can't trust the police. Because some of them drink rum and talk. You can tell your wife that in. Who these people are, because they, they can get killed. So they need, they need to have, have you head of CI. I they thank you. I thank you for flattering me. God bless you. Okay, thank you. You've made You're my welcome. day. 323 7775. Welcome to Freedom Mars Call. You're live. Yes, good afternoon, Special Advisor. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Munker. Sir. I just have one small little problem. Go ahead. I drive out by Fish Fry yesterday, right? You know, as you come off the main West Bay Street and you turn into that entrance on the right. Yes. Line up the little end. Yes. Okay. Man yeah. out there is filthy. Explain. Plenty sand, plenty rocks in the road. Yeah. That's and as you drive further on the Fish Fry, you get the sun, you get the lint, small lint bikes, you get dirt. Everywhere around fil fish fry is filthy. I don't know who cleaning up out there, now, but they're doing a good job. Now, I need to ask you a question. Um, yes, sir. Filthiness means that there is sand flowing from the sea onto the land. Am I correct? I agree. Okay, that, that's an easy thing. Um, I'm going to talk to the Ministry of Works. And but as you drive into the main fish fry area, yeah. Yeah. you have paper, you have uh, dirt, you okay. have uh, what else? Everything would fly in, just getting in the corners of the sidewalk. Okay, I'm going to... Nobody cleaning it up. I'm going to talk to the Ministry of Works to move the sand or give me some of the sand because I could use some sand. And then I'm going to talk with my good friend who's been doing a wonderful job out there, Brother 
Levon Miller. All right? But they need to give spiritual advice or contract. No, um, in the case of that, this is not an available contract. Okay, got you. Uh, yeah, the spiritual advisor has his contact with the prime minister, and whenever he ready for his contract, he knows exactly yeah. where to find the yeah, prime right. minister. Yeah. Okay. All right, so you yeah. take care. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Carla. Well, welcome to Freedom March, Carla. You're live. Yes, um, good afternoon, spiritual advice. Mr. Good afternoon. Monica. Hello, my dear. Hi, the first time caller. Welcome. Uh, yes, I'm calling about um, Mr. Bonamy. Okay. Okay, I'm his constituent. And right as you turn off of Blue Hill Road, opposite the entrance of Air Body School. Yes. There's a lot of garbage pile up there. Right really? Right next to it is an abandoned house. The house is abandoned? Yes. I okay. mean, well, it's up for sale, but people just start dumping stuff. Okay. Yes. Well, we have to talk to Mr. Bonneby about that because that sounds like a nice little contract for a young woman. So we'll talk to him about it, okay? All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Welcome to Freedom Mars, Call your life. Hello. Good afternoon, caller. Yeah, I like to talk. Um, I... I, I, I'm trying to figure out what's going on in this country. Explain. Come on, because, listen to me, these young people know exactly what they're doing. And know the law look like they're joking with these, these young people. Explain. Listen to me. In the United States, when a child do a serious crime, they go to jail for years. We need to start every day that in the Bahamas. And showing their pictures and calling their names. Yes. I agree with you. We need to put that in the Bahamas. Yeah. Though so these little teachers feel that they are untouchable. Yeah. And no, a law and the these parents, them, they, listen to me, they just like when you are uh, farming, they grown up criminals. Wow. They grown up criminals. Yeah, yeah. we have to talk to the parents and we have to have some laws and then we have to make sure that we work to love the children and to discipline them, okay? But you, but you have to understand when parents are children themselves. Well, that is true, yeah. And that's our main problem in this country. That is true. So we really need to do something about it. Y yes. You know, the specialized friend is all well and done. But it's still Listen, Absolutely. We call us tomorrow. We this is the for the match. The show is end, right? Yes, it is. God save the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. We're looking for Mikhail Bonaby. All right, Mikhail Bonaby tomorrow. God save the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. God save young people. God save the king. Do well, everybody. My spiritual advisor. Till tomorrow. Unless. Jesus returns.